Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking to you from Washington, D.C. This is the afternoon of Friday, the 28th of August, 2015. So here we are at the end of the month of August. And our campaign against General Allen is bearing further fruit. August was the month we said we've got to do grievous damage to the political fortunes of this adventurer, right? This purveyor of sedition. And sure enough, things are actually beginning to fall into place. Let us focus, first of all, on the return of the United States to diplomacy concerning Syria. And you'll remember uh, during that last weekend of July, when Obama was in Africa, he flew over to Kenya and then to Ethiopia for the Organization of African Unity. You remember that that was the weekend when Allen treacherously tried to stab the U.S. in the back by conniving with his friend Erdogan of Turkey and the Muslim Brotherhood, the kingpin of ISIS, nothing less. You'll remember that Obama and the White House immediately repudiated. They said, no, we don't want any part of a safe haven or safe zone, especially for terrorists. And uh, he then, so he repudiated the Allen policy and he set in motion, Obama did, a diplomatic counterweight. Uh, and that is the new United, Sp United States Special Ambassador for Syria, Michael Ratney, R-A-T-N-E-Y. I've told you in the past why Obama feels he can't fire Allen, because Allen would take with him a whole bunch of people, quite possibly some very important ones, we don't know. Uh, he'd take with him a whole bunch of neocon officials, and they would then line up and start denouncing the Iran nuclear accord. And Obama feels that is a risk he doesn't want to run. After all, what Obama would say, it's less than a month until the Congress has to vote, right? The Congress is, has got to have the first votes on the Iran nuclear accord by approximately the middle of September. So that's the factor, right? And again, anybody who thinks the president of the United States simply by virtue of being elected has real power is a fool. This is the biggest systematic delusion that people have. Well, the president, you have all that power. You have it if you're willing to fight for it and assert it. And of course, for a long time, Obama was not willing to do that. Be that as it may. Now, there's something positive moving. So the first step for the new special envoy, Michael Ratney, U.S. special envoy for Syria. He is a distinguished foreign service officer with a distinguished career as a U.S. diplomat. And he did the obvious thing to begin with, given the structure of the world. The U.S. needs Russia in order to get something positive going in the Syrian bloodbath. And notice there is absolutely no sign that Russia would allow the ouster of Assad. That is not on the table. Don't listen to uh, Brand X ana analysis or anything else that suggests this is so. It is not so. So here we go. Uh, today, we have Agence France Press two hours ago, a few hours ago, reporting, and that's uh, Friday the 28th of August, as I mentioned. Russia on Friday hosted the newly appointed U.S. Special Envoy for Syria as world powers intensify efforts to end the four-year-plus civil war raging in the country. In Moscow, Ratney met with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov and other senior officials, but no details about their meeting were immediately released. Well, we do have a readout. We're going to get to that in a minute. The spokesman for the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, Will Stevens, told Agence France Press ahead of Ratney's meeting that the visit reaffirms, quote, reaffirms the United States' strong commitment to working with the international community to help Syrians lay the foundations 
for a free, <clears throat> democratic, and pluralistic future. Okay, so the rest of this uh, is a little bit uh, vague in this dispatch, but remember, Putin, Russian President Vladimir Putin, this past week had two important visitors, the Jordanian King Abdullah II and Egyptian President General Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. And these two personalities are also having, they have also discussed the uh, Syrian, ISIS, and related questions uh, in terms of what to do about it. There's a Russian diplomatic offensive. The Russian diplomatic offensive is that there should be a regional anti-ISIS alliance. This, of course, is poison for the seditious General Allen, the U.S. ISIS czar, who is, the, the noose is tightening around him. We'll get to it in a minute. But Erdogan of Turkey does not want a regional alliance against ISIS. He wants to expand ISIS and protect them. But Abdullah of Jordan, possibly, and Sisi, for sure, want to shut down ISIS. And we have to remember that Lavrov, uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, during the month of August, uh, hosted his Saudi and Iranian counterparts at separate times, as well as members of the Syrian opposition, in other words, people that are in the actual democratic opposition, the people who take part in elections, the people who get seats in the Syrian parliament. In other words, there is an opposition, it, it is democratic, and I've met actually some of them, uh, and that's fine. But the people who are outside with Kalashnikovs, those are the terrorists. That's a whole different story. And that's ISIS. So uh, the itinerary for Ratney is Moscow, then on to Geneva, and then Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Let's say a couple of other things here. We are going to have the visit of the Saudi king here in Washington, D.C., apparently next week. We are going to have the visit of uh, the Chinese President Xi here in Washington, D.C. This is XI, okay? President Xi. Now, China, of course, world power, happy to have them involved. They should be involved. They're on the Security Council. They have every uh, reason to be involved. So welcome to that. Uh, you can see, therefore, what's going on is diplomacy. There was also a UN Security Council resolution passed this past uh, week with a U.S. yes vote and a Russian yes vote, saying there has to be a diplomatic solution to the Syrian crisis. So believe me, this is not what Allen wants. This is not what Erdogan wants. This is a step forward. So now, for those of you who were waiting, uh, whatever happened to that guy, Ratney, he has been setting these things up. So now we have a counterposition. We've got the warmonger neocon, Allen, U.S. ISIS czar Allen. He's the special envoy to members of the so-called anti-ISIS coalition, except in the case of Turkey, it's a pro-ISIS member of the anti-ISIS coalition. The main saboteur, Erdogan of Turkey, Allen's bosom buddy, best friend. They have to go, both of them. Uh, so that's uh, that uh, relationship is going up. But now, now there's an alternative. That's no longer the only game in town. You now have Ratney and a group in the State Department that is interested in solving this. Now, uh, let's not kid ourselves. The Freemasonic element supporting Allen is huge. And we'll get to the full uh, horrendous details of that when we turn on World Crisis Stadium. Mr. Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. So we're looking with great interest and with uh, benevolent intentions at the attempt by the new Syrian special envoy, Michael Ratney, to go to Moscow, meet with the key official, and that is Bogdanov, deputy assistant, deputy so uh, Russian foreign minister for the Middle East. So they meet, and then Ratney goes on to Geneva, various uh, European diplomats, UN bureaucracy, and then Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, at the same time that the Saudi king 
will be here in Washington, and that will be a week when uh, President Xi of China will also be involved. Putin this past week met with Sisi and Abdullah, and uh, Lavrov, the foreign minister, had uh, those conversations with the Iranians and with the Saudis. And you'll remember his choice, colorful language, uh, vis-a-vis the uh, the uh, delegation led by Foreign Minister Joubert of uh, of Saudi Arabia. Apparently, they uh, they have a hard time understanding the need for a negotiated solution. We're told that uh, that the Saudis actually want the United States to do more to attack Assad. Well, just leaping ahead to the argument. The whole world is now looking with horror, absolute horror, at the appalling situation created by the bombing of Libya and the ouster of Gaddafi, and also by the four and a half years of civil war fomented by outside powers, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, number one and two, in Syria. All of those refugees converging on Europe are direct spinoff of these lunatic humanitarian bombing campaigns pushed by people like Hillary Clinton, by Samantha Power and others. So I cannot imagine that we're going to be able to uh, to sell uh, in any form to the American people or the government the idea that it's now time to bomb the Assad regime out of existence and simply deliver this entire area into the hands of these butchers from ISIS. It is in the idea is obscene. So uh, lots of luck on that one. Now, as I was saying, the Freemasonic networks mobilized in support of the Allen clique. And of course, the Allen clique is the Petraeus clique. And behind Petraeus stand the billions of Henry Kravis. On National Public Radio today, we had uh, the Diane Rehm show, right? This is an interesting uh, program, um, you know, puts out a lot of uh, lines, not not good for the truth, but it tells you what's what the uh, the Georgetown conversation is, I guess. And what do we have? The New York Times character in this uh, thing, they're discussing the fact they, they did, uh, to their uh, credit, I suppose, talk about the fact that Ratney has now gone on this um, on this dip- diplomatic uh, tour, right, of the key capitals. So uh, the New York Times correspondent, let's see if we can find him. Um, I'm not sure I can find him anyway. The, the New York Times correspondent, you can listen to this. Actually, you should. It's interesting. The New York Times correspondent says, well, uh, patronizing, belittling. He says, I'm sure, I'm sure Ratney is a distinguished foreign service officer, but Ratney lacks that massive stature that we see in somebody like Richard Holbrook or General John Allen. General John Allen is more of a household term for this guy than Ratney. This is what he said, right? Uh, Ratney is not a household word. He doesn't have that stature that we see in the case of Holbrook for uh, Bosnia and so forth. Or Allen. Well, Allen is precisely the guy who has failed. And this is a character who deliberately operates behind the scenes. If people know about Allen, we're going to take that here as an accomplishment of this program, the Tarpley.net website, the Tax Wall Street Party, and similar efforts, because we want you to know about Allen, and we want you to get in the campaign, hashtag fire Allen for number four, ISIS, I-S-I-S. So that's the kind of support we get, right? You can see instinctively and through communication, I'm sure these networks are now aligning that what Ratney is doing is going to be a failure, because what we really need is bombing and U.S. heavy divisions on the ground. That's the program of Allen and Petraeus. Now, let's just go back a little bit. Here we have the U.S. State Department website, U.S. Department of State Diplomacy in Action, state.gov. Readout, we find, readout of U.S. Special Envoy for Syria, Michael Ratney's trip to Moscow. Media note, Office of the Spokesperson, Washington, D.C., August 28, 2015. U.S. Special Envoy for Syria, Michael Ratney, visited Moscow today for consultations with Russian officials on the ongoing conflict in Syria. These meetings in Moscow are part of consultations to follow up on Secretary Kerry's 
recent discussions with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov in Doha and Kuala Lumpur, as well as ongoing 